Sean's still alive? Where's I'm he still at? Alive. I'm here. Okay. Okay. So, right. in honor of Kazuchika Okada's departure from New Japan Pro Wrestling, we went back and watched his last his main events at the last three Tokyo Domes, except that one year he wrestled twice and we only picked watch one of them. Yeah, because on Sunday we we just picked the the last three and we we didn't realize until after the show was over that it was actually a two night Tokyo Dome. Yeah. So uh, we did not watch the Okada Osprey match. No. But we watched Okada Shingo, Okada Jay White, and Okada Brian Danielson. Yes. Yes. So we begin New Japan Wrestle Kingdom 16, January 4th, 2022. Kazuchika Okada versus Shingo Takagi for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, and I had forgotten everything about this match until it started, and then it all came flashing back. How to me. funny that you should say that, Vinny. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say one short thing here, and then I'm not going to talk about anything in all these matches. I'll just let you review them. But you know, I remember this match. Pretty sure it was this match. Because uh, I am on a streak of 20 days right now of 10,000 plus steps per day. 20 straight days. And I used to walk on the treadmill while watching shows back in the day. And I was walking on the treadmill, and I believe it was this match that I was watching. And I wasn't walking fast, maybe uh, three miles an hour. And, uh, And I turned this match on, and I started watching it. And you know this Okada fella is really really fucking good are you aware of that i am now this guy is so good and he's so smooth and he's one of those guys like sean michaels when you watch a a great sean michaels match rick flair when you watch a great rick flair match bret hart when you watch a great bret hart match uh nick jackson i'll throw in there when you watch a nick jackson singles match these guys are so goddamn smooth that you watch this match, and at least me, I don't know about the rest of you, but I watched and I think, God damn, I'd like to wrestle again. Hmm. But you know, I don't I don't think that watching a lot of matches. But there are a few guys where you watch it, and it just looks like it, he makes it look so much fun. And I'm watching the match, and he's just fucking great. But as I'm watching it, I realize he's not doing anything. <laughs> not in this match, no. And so I, I, I watched it, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to set my timer, and I'm going to see how long it takes for him to expend more energy than I'm expending walking at three miles an hour flat on this treadmill. I thought, "Ah, you know, at six, seven minutes, he's going to do some grappling, some groundwork, some whatever. I swear to God, it was probably 22 fucking minutes before I decided, okay, he now is working harder than I am here on this fucking treadmill. This fucking match, like, when it was over, it was not the best match I ever saw. I don't think it was, like, anywhere close to, like, match of the year or anything like that. I'm sure the Okada match was, or the Osprey match was better. But he had such a fucking great match. And, like, until the end, it was so easy and so simple. And, god damn, it was just so great. And every Okada match I watch is the exact same way. He is is a master of pacing himself. And, like, the others are talking about, he's trained so hard lately, he's got himself in great shape, his cardio is out outstanding. And I'm watching him going, I mean, did he tell you that? Because you can't see watching it. But he does these matches, and, like, the last ten minutes, it goes from just being, like, whatever to just one of the best matches you'll for sure see that week, maybe that month, and maybe that year. And all three of these matches, I just watched this guy in absolute awe of how fucking awesome he was. And, you know, it doesn't matter if he goes to AEW. It doesn't matter if he goes to WWE. Everywhere he goes, he could be fucking the best guy there. So anyway, this match was awesome. So it is January 2020, uh, 2022. Yep. I had forgotten. This was still pandemic light. Yes. So the fans, they had fans. A full they had crowd. limited they had fans. Limited fans, excuse they me. They allowed limited fans. No cheering. No. Mm. Cheering was not allowed. Only clapping was allowed. But the match was good enough. Then the last three, four minutes, they couldn't help themselves. Yes. And you heard them cheer. And then they realized, oh, can't do that. So, yes. Red uh, Shoes was in a mask, too. Red Shoes was in a mask. All yeah. The, all the, uh, the comment. I think the commentators, I, I, they didn't show them. I believe they had plexiglass booths. 
so they could speak clearly. In no, the they didn't show them one time, and yes, they did have plexiglass. Okay, there you go then. So they're doing this match, and it is fascinating. Just the, the, the chops and the grunts and the way they echo in what is virtually, at this point, an empty Tokyo Dome. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's people there, but they can't do anything. So you just hear this echo for days after each chop. Hey, listen, I prefer fans, but when they took a bump and it sounded like a shotgun blast yeah. every time, that was awesome. So Shingo was working him over, and uh, he's just grounding him on the mat and beating him and pummeling him. And at one point... He whips Okada into the ropes, and Okada ducks two things and hits a big elbow, whatever. And as I'm typing, that was Shingo's mistake. Kevin Kelly reads my mind here three years in the future, two years in the future, and says, ah, that was Shingo's mistake. Should have kept him grounded. Should have kept on control. As soon as Okada created distance, Okada took over. So I'm going to make a strange comparison here, but uh, trust me, it fits. In many ways, Kazuchika Okada is pro wrestling's answer to the NFL's Kansas City Chiefs. Because for the past five years or so, the Chiefs have been the best team overall. Not each of those years, but over the, over the, the, the span. But there's, they just can't help themselves. When they get close to the end zone. They get too cute for their own good. And you all saw this past Sunday with a handoff to Michael Hardman, who sucks and everyone knows it. And he fumbles and they nearly lost the game because of it. And there's a play earlier in the game where they try like a fake screen one way, a real screen the other way. And it's a disaster. And they do this all the time. When they have this, the best quarterback in the world, just let him go win. Because Kazuchika Okada has a fatal flaw. He can't resist putting on that money clip. Oh, God, the money clip. <laughs> you know what's funny about the money clip? Is in this match, they were talking about how he debuted the money clip. I forget what year they said. But it may have been like 2020 or something like that. They go, it was a few years ago. He, de- he, de- he developed and uh, And I remember when he first started using the fucking money clip. I was like, dude, you got the fucking Rainmaker, and you got so many ways to get into that, and it's such an awesome move, and people can take such great bumps. Why are you trying to get over the money clip? But I thought, you know what? It's Okada. He'll get it over. Might take a while, but he'll get it over. Well, watching this match, it's fucking two years later. Nobody gives a shit about the money clip still. And uh, I think there might have been a money clip in that, that Danielson match. I don't remember anyone giving a shit about it there either. He never got the money clip over because it's the money clip. And he's still trying to this day. God. So when I take notes of these matches that are, I know are long going in, I know I know a New Japan main event is going to go minimum 20 minutes, usually 30. And I, I do a new paragraph when they announce every, you know, they announce five minutes have gone by, 10 minutes have gone by, 15 minutes have gone by. And so I have my notes here are separated into five minute segments. And in the five minutes between minute 15 and minute 20, Okada, apply the money clip five different times. Uh. And I was exasperated. He gave up on it for a while. I think I did do think he got a, a sixth one later in the match. So they're just doing this match, and 20 minutes in, uh, Okada hits the body slam, the elbow drop, the Rainmaker pose. But when he tries the Rainmaker, Shingo counters with his own lariat, and then Shingo does the Rainmaker pose. And immediately the mood shifts you've never seen okada so pissed he jumps up like a wild animal mauling him like a bear on the ropes risking dq shoving the ref and then just blitz each other for a while and it's like you said from that point on it's unbelievable yes but it took him 20 minutes to get started yes but you know he had another match with osprey the next night that is also true he he paced himself that is also true so it's giant moves and a, a DDT on the top rope. And Okada's a big, tall dude. That DDT off the top is like the biggest DDT ever. Uh, saves the the drop kick, which I merely call just the drop kick when Okada hits it. It's like 22 minutes in when he hits it for the first time. And there's lariats and made in Japan's and suplexes and elbows. And it's actually kind of cool with the, with the quiet crowd. Uh, as you noted, I prefer crowd and I prefer cheering. But when they are not allowed to cheer, can only clap. And the guys are trading elbows to the face. And the crowd... Claps along with each elbow strike, and it's echoing everywhere. It was a really cool environment. And somewhere in here, finally, uh, let's see. Shingo goes. To, Shingo hits a dragon suplex of death. We're 35 minutes in, and he goes to hit the ropes. And I should mention, this is not news, but we're you know over a half hour into this, and this Shingo can hit the ropes like a motherfucker. This dude runs the ropes. Unfortunately for him, he runs right into the drop kick, and Okada hits a landslide on Rainmaker. 
and he wins. Yes, it was awesome. It also would have been awesome if the first act had been five, ten minutes shorter. <laughs> that uh, DDT off the top rope could have been very tragic. Um, they uh, they landed at different times, and Shingo landed second. Um, gosh, that could have been tragic. Um, the first 30 minutes of this match was um, tolerable to watch. <laughs> Tolerable, you was, say. It was very, tolerable. It was very well paced, but um, I, it really, really picked up at the end. And uh, I watched this one last. I probably should have watched it first. Got to watch but, them in uh, order, brother. Yeah, I watched them this year back. So. I see. Oh. Yeah, I should have watched this one first. Sean, your thoughts? Yeah, so my favorite parts of this uh, match were there was this uh, cross body on the outside yeah, like near the beginning. And he, Okada hit this dude so hard with his entire body that poor Shingo's head smacks and hits the gate behind him. Bru that no, it hit the like, chair. It looked like it sucked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he hit him hard. There's also a moment uh, later where uh, Shingo gives Okada like this deadlift suplex that is so like he the guy is on his on his like his stomach. And he pulls him up smoothly as possible. Yes. Up and over his head. And it's a one fluid motion. It was awesome. And then by far my favorite part of this show was near the end when they were murdering each other with like those lariats and the closed lines. And you can hear them throughout the entire crowd uh, or throughout the entire stadium. And then there's a t silence from the announcers. And there's a one extremely brutal one. And then Kevin Kelly just says, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I really yeah. realized that like, Kevin Kelly. I, I knew he was, I've known he was good for a long time. Kevin Kelly is really quite awesome. Like he's mm -hmm. he, he he's maybe my favorite announcer working right now. He's great. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do: Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.